the top. Yeah. So who is Meredith? Reference in the top email I'm, of Exhibit 1578. I have no idea. You don't know who the Meredith contribution is from? No. Would it be appropriate to break down a single contribution into 10 anonymous contributions? I don't believe that's possible. You don't believe it's appropriate? I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what the law is, so I'm not sure that you can do that or not. This is a done deal. Get ready to do it. They haven't even asked permission to do it yet. Which the is mayor right. told them privately, oh, yeah, your cash customers, do it. And that's what I've been instructed to do. They're cash paying customers. This is partisan back room Chicago politics. I was never asked. I was never consulted. I've simply gotten emails and said this is a done deal. Well, we got one for you here tonight. This is a complicated and a complex and a controversial issue. I'm Dr. Jorgen, your host. This is Jim Spodek, our producer, and Mr. George Myers, our regular commentator and contributor. This goes back to 2013, the Mound Cemetery controversy. I'm going to lay the groundwork for you here a little bit. There's a map of the cemetery that shows a site that is part of this controversy in question and it's denoted as a mound. In 2013, Mayor Dickert strikes a deal with the Meredith family to sell the plot to them for half the value of this quantity of land to be used as a family burial plot. And he orders the cemetery director to complete the deal. The design that the Meredith submitted did not comply with Mound Cemetery regulations. The Meredith then under the guidance of the mayor, apply, appeal to the Parks Department rather than following the proper procedure of appealing to the City Council. The Parks Department approves their plan. And the issue is then put up for a vote by the Council without them having been properly informed on the controversy. After the sale was voted down by the Council, Mayor Dickert gets busy to create controversy over the vote and force a re-vote at which time Alderman DeHaan changes his vote and creates a tie, which places the mayor in the position of breaking the tie. So please watch the following video carefully in its entirety and decide for yourself who does and does not behave honestly and honorably. We'll have a deeper discussion of this topic and address the mayor's truthfulness in a follow-up episode. Yeah, I just that's an important point. This is something that happened several years ago, but it's been brought forward now into present time as part yeah, of another right. issue. Yeah, in fact, uh, the, the mayor uh, verbally attacks uh, Alderman Sandy Widener, who was on the cemetery commission and rejected this idea four years ago. And and now this has erupted again because, uh, well, we won't, we won't get into that right now. Let's just play the video clip and uh, absorb this and, right. and see what kind of leadership we have in this town. We'll talk to you soon. What he says is, Alderman Widener, thank you for your note, but as you will recall, a couple of years ago, you and a te team of people, which were Pins, opposed to the purchase of a parcel of the Mound Cemetery, arguing that the parcel was a Native American burial mound. As a matter of fact, you held demonstrations, which is not true, um, with a number of organizations. There was one group of people, and those were uh, the Native Americans, many of which I believe you are still working with, which I don't know why anybody would think that, demanding that the site was historic and should be protected. As you recall, I invited the tribes that build mounds. Actually, he invited a firm that excavates mounds to determine if there is something or someone buried within that mound. Uh, to Racine to determine if the site was actually a mound. Without clear evidence that it was a mound, you and your opposition organization, which was a group of Native Americans, stated that you, I never said this, would raise the money to pay off the loss of $40,000.
To date, after checking with the finance department, we have a total of $1,000 raised. That is an amount that is disputed by a Journal Time article of April 5th of 2015. So I'm simply holding you to your word that you and your opposition group, the Native Americans, would raise the money to make up for the offer we had for as a city. As I see it, over the next year, you can work with the same group of opposition groups to raise the additional $39,000 that is owed to the city and the cemetery. Best of luck to you in your endeavor. I have never experienced <laughs> where an alderman would be held hostage to a, a commission because of promise that was made by an, uh, an organization. This alderman never promised to raise $39,000 or $19,000. A group of Native Americans who were concerned about losing what could have been a burial site said that they would work with the city to donate money. The email that I received from the mayor today is very disturbing to me that he either wants to punish me or to hold me ransom to a commission I asked to not be appointed to again until I raise funds. And I do not think that that is in the best interest of this council for any council member to, member to be put in a position like that. So that is the reason why I am asking that we amend the mayor's report to remove my name as an appointment to the cemetery commission. Thank you for your consideration. So Alderman Widener, in response, let's take a trip down memory lane. You actually were concerned about the family that applied for this lot, and you had uh, was not there with just a Native American tribe because there was no actual tribe. There was some tribal members, but as you recall, uh, Mr. Spodek and uh, I'm, I'm speaking, Alderman Widener, and if you please, I, I allowed you to speak, but now it's time to allow me to respond to your comments. Mr. Spodek and a group of others were actually doing videos of your protests there because at the original uh, time that you had requested uh, some concerns about this, you had actually had a group there. What's your point of order, Alderman Weiner? Mr. Mayor, you are not speaking to the motion. I'm speaking you, in response, Alderman Weiner. So thank you. The, the motion is to remove you from the committee, and I'm, I'm responding to your response to be removed from the committee. So, so we're, well, I'm trying to try to resolve the, the concerns that were brought up. So, so Alderman Widener, the group that we brought was the Mound Builders. Alderman Shakur, Alderman Shakur, let me just respond. The group that we brought were actually a group of Native Americans called, and their, their tribal name is not as important as their history because they are the Mound Builders. They were not there to dig into the mound. They were not there to destroy the mound. They were actually there to do a historical relevance and history citing to determine if the mound was there. So in doing that, they had asked us to set this aside. But Alderman, you and your group had actually stated that you would take care of those funds. So we're, we're short a significant amount of money, and all I'm simply asking you to do is live up to your word to the Cemetery Commission and not leave them in a hole, as you had promised us with your group. So if you're not willing to do that, I'm sure the council will be happy to take you off, but I was just hoping you'd live up to your word because that cemetery commission is in a hole, that site still sits there, and the people that we're going to invest in our cemetery are not doing that any longer. So thankfully, the mound builders were kind enough to work with us and come all the way down for free to talk to us and do an assessment, but to say that you had a tribe or any tribe of people that were working on this, there were Native Americans there, but uh, your group was far exceeding the Native American group. I believe there's a whole series of videos to prove that, but I think it's important just to be honest with the public about this, and we really wish you'd live up to your goal, but if you don't want to do that, we can see that. You can take yourself off the commission, and we'll find somebody that will help, and in uh, filling that gap of $39,000. So the committee vote before you is an amendment to remove Alderman Widener's name, and we'll... This is why we have Mound Cemetery. The mounds that you see here and behind you over here that extend back towards the office, 
and out this way towards Kinsey Avenue. Those are the Native American mounds. Mound Cemetery obviously named for them because the mound builders used them as a burial site. Originally, there were approximately 138 mounds in this area. They went up into where my office is and across the street into where CVS parking lot and Durango's was. Uh, they also went across the street north here into the Catholic cemeteries. However, these 12 are the only ones that survive today. Uh, when Increase Lapham and Dr. Philo Hoy surveyed this area, they thought that it would be a great place because it already was a cemetery that we would continue on. Uh, however, when they proposed that to the city of Racine, the city of Racine said they did not want to be bought buried by a bunch of, of heathens. However, obviously, uh, Philo Hoy and Increase Lapham prevailed, and we have what we have here today, a cemetery that was started back in 1852. Uh, but it's not our first cemetery, by the way. Our first cemetery was what in the area of what is now Winslow School parking lot. Okay. Um, the second cemetery that we had along the line was owned by Isaac Taylor and that was over by where the wastewater treatment plant is, the big bubble over there, Roosevelt School. However, um, it was not uncommon, uh, unfortunately, for the caretakers to have to go after a big storm into the lake and get the caskets that had been washed <laughs> out into the lake and bring them back and rebury them. Even back then, you couldn't have paid me that much money. <laughs> so. Um, this has been uh, a cemetery for an estimated one to 3,000 years old because of the Native Americans that are buried here. Uh, when the land was purchased from James Kinsey and Jacques Willamette and his Native American wife, uh, it was purchased for about $650. Um, just this small area, there's about 16 acres that it was, that was purchased was purchased with the understanding that you would leave the mounds alone however one of the first things they did is they dug into the mounds because native american artifacts were so valuable to people back then as they are now and that's how they discovered that these heathens that they didn't want to be buried next to were actually buried in an upright position with bark placed around them and facing the rising sun so, uh, kind of ironic that most religions have that view to face the the rising sun. What so, were the markers that are placed on top of that? And when were those put on top? This is the only marker you will find that designates this as an Indian mound. When it was placed there, we cannot find. So, um, they're, they're just there are so many records that have been lost. Um, and. I, I just, I don't have an answer for you. I wish I did. I can tell you about that between one and three Native Americans are buried in each mound. When these cemeteries were built, <laughs> as Ms. Trump can tell you, A.J. Horlick said that we have to keep the politics out of the cemetery. And that clearly did not happen in this case. Yeah, the well, cemetery commission itself tries very hard to keep the politics out. That was 1911. And in 1911, I mean, he really made the point clear once and for all. And you had the Wadowitz family, uh, William Wadowitz, protecting the cemetery. And you had the cemetery commission acting independently and on their own time with an alderman. Uh, making decisions. Name some of those. But the fact that this was named, marked by Dr. Hoy is very dramatic, clear evidence. And if there's anybody has standing, it's the Native Americans, because this is their land. The, the Meredith's have an absolute right to seek this land. Any other family would too. I, I, you have to admire in a sense that they looked at this and saw this as a prospective site. But the question isn't whether uh, it should be sold to them. The question is, is there a right to sell? This is unplanted territory. It was primary burial ground set aside. Uh, 
This was Native American long before the Europeans came. It's just that simple. I mean, it's simple. I mean, So I have a question. Does the Park and Rec Board supersede the Cemetery Commission? The Cemetery Commission was always a standalone commission from the time the city was established as a city in 1850. Kind of like the Traffic Commission or any other. So it's but not the Cemetery Commission that's that's okay with uh, well, this thing. No, absolutely. Cemetery Commission is opposed highly to opposed to it. That, that would be us <laughs> and one other gentleman. How does this end? If the Cemetery Commission says no, how does it end up going to the Park and Rec <laughs> Committee? Well, it should not. Have. It should not. Have. It should. And I tried to make that case at council meeting. It should have gone direct to the council. The mayor just had every right to appeal the, the recommendation of the Cemetery Commission. However, the Cemetery Commission's recommendation never went to the council. Yeah, yeah. So it never came to the council first. It just went directly to the Cemetery Commission. And then their appeal went directly to the Parks Board without ever any of that ever being read at right. the council. So, when this item, when so it's, it's almost like they chose to appeal it to the park and rec because there's no there's no standard that well, says if they don't agree with your decision they can appeal it. I to have the, no idea who they submitted their appeal to. I never saw a copy of <laughs> yeah. their wow. their appeal. Yeah. Did you, Tom? I did yeah. I believe it went yeah. to yeah. the mayor's office. I believe. So the mayor's I'll office would, me have, that, but I think it would. would have submitted the to the parks board, where in, in fact he should have submitted it to the council. To the common council, right? Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. The request of the Meredith family was denied by the Cemetery Commission for several reasons, even before the discovery that this may be an Indian burial site. While we respect, as most people do, the symbolism of family unity, this design proposal would not be in keeping with the guidelines for burial in Mound Cemetery. Those areas not platted were known Indian burial mounds. There is a reason why this spot was never platted. One of the first parcels purchased for the cemetery was for, from a Potawatomi family. The sale was contingent on the fact that the city promised to honor and respect the burial sites of their people. Um, this request for unplatted area and unusual layout would be setting a dangerous precedent, opening the door for others to request unplatted land in the, within the cemetery. The suggestion that they would pay for 20 graves for their personal design plan is interesting since had this area be, been platted in a traditional manner, it would produce 40 graves. I've personally contacted several cemeteries and could find no cemetery that would allow this platting design. I see potential lawsuits from families that were denied burial space in Mount Cemetery. Thank you. I am also a member of the Cemetery Commission. Mount Cemetery is a 163-year-old cemetery of great national historic significance. It is our duty to protect and preserve it for future generations. The request to occupy unplatted land and to design a unique grave configuration is inconsistent with the cemetery design created by Dr. Hoy in 1850. Other cemeteries we contacted wouldn't allow this request, and neither should we since, especially since there are blocks of graves available in Mound. We simply cannot have individuals redesigning the cemetery. The council needs to do the right thing and protect this space and, and avoid the embarrassing publicity of having the State Historical Society, the Potawatomi Tribe, the DNR, and the Department of the Interior coerce Racine to do the right thing. 
Most of the 138 mounds Dr. Hoy identified in Racine have been lost. Mound Cemetery is a historical treasure for the nation, and its integrity must be preserved. The Cemetery Commission is committed to doing the right thing for the cemetery and ultimately for Racine. Please uphold the Commission's decision and deny this request. There were members of the Cemetery Commission that were not allowed or were not recognized when they raised their hand to speak when the motion was made to approve the, the request from the Meredith family. And in all due respect, that's someone that you would want to hear from. I don't mean to go back and talk about my 14 years on City Council, but I've been on the Cemetery Commission for as long as I've been on the City Council. And I have never worked with a harder working group of people that were more dedicated to preserving the history of this city than those that are on the Cemetery Commission. That's why I choose to remain on that board, because of the amount of work that those individuals are willing to put into that. When they make this recommendation, they do not do it lightly. They dig into all of the history so that they can preserve for future generations the sanctity of that cemetery. Okay, motion passes. What? No. No, I vote aye. I vote aye. It's 7 7. Can we see it again? It? Okay. There it is. No, that, that can't be accurate. Hang on, we're getting it clarified. The vote's the exact same as it was during the... No, no, it's 8-7. No, that's because you voted now, Mr. Mayor. Because no, no, no. Mayor Dickard voted aye to make it 8-7. It, 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 it shouldn't be no, who the hell changed their vote. Yes, I voted no both times. Do a voice vote. Did you change all the materials? Right. So the the vote on the consent agenda resolution was actually, as she's got it, was six to eight. So there was not a tie vote. So no, I don't vote on on a non tie. No, no. So we've got, look at, look at the vote. Look at the vote as you've got it up there and make sure your votes are correct so we have it accurate. Somebody knows who changed. Who changed? Who changed? I mean, they're allowed to. I don't know. Are, are your votes accurate? Look at the board and tell us if your your votes are accurate or not. Let's do a voice vote, Mr. Mayor. The 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 vote is on the board. If there's an inaccuracy in the vote, then right. somebody should tell me. We need to see it again. It's gone again. Okay, can you please put it on the board? Currently, right now. No, we want the last vote on the resolution. 
on the resolution. This is the vote for the resolution. If everybody's accurate on this, then the resolution fails. It's not up there yet. accurate. Everybody voted. This is in support of the resolution. Yes, I voted. I voted no. Yes. It's irrelevant. Do you want to vote on the item? How do you want to vote on the item? Okay. Your Honor, I move for a voice vote on the resolution. Second. Uh, voice or roll call? Okay. All right. Well, let's roll it. Okay. Alderman Cole? Aye. Sarazen? Aye. Shields? Aye. Kaplan? Aye. Caprelli and Becker? Aye. Widener? Aye. DeHaan? Aye. Shakur? No. McCarthy? No. Weiser? No. Helding? Aye. Perez? No. Morgan Roth? He's excused. Excused. Hart? And deal. No. Okay. Tie vote. So the mayor votes aye. The mayor votes aye. Announce the votes. Tie vote. It was tie vote. The mayor votes aye. In favor. In favor. Seven. It's seven to seven. Same as it was before. Okay. Okay. Let's All right. Here and let's edit the votes. Any final items before? Tonight? All right. I'm here as the Park and Recreation Director. Right. And that I'm following what has been recommended for me through Council was to go through the historical society's list we did that and this is where we're at today so i'm kind of here to follow through on what, what that is uh whether they do it today because of rain or whatever purposes um that's going to be on on them they should have all the permits and all that kind of stuff but i'm here just to follow through on what what's supposed to be done case it's uh make sure everything is followed how it should be followed and everybody gets their say on stuff before we start doing anything so well there Thank are you. other ways to make the determination other than by drilling a core sample out of here correct uh, sonar it's, as far as far as what we do no okay as far as our this is what your strict, company was contracted to do specifically geomorphology right. so this is we we do what uh, you do this is for, for us exactly so I mean, you gotta have the permit process has to be right. right. So we're not going to be throwing in this pond. We, we will be doing this. So, oh, so uh, and, and out of respect, we we really appreciate. Oh sure, it. sure. Yeah. No, we want everything in order. That's yeah, yeah. It's not lost on us. What's going on here? So, okay. If there's opposition that's been spoken, which we know it has, then the State Historical Society has to offer um, a hearing. And that was never put out to anyone who had approached them about objecting to this, is our understanding. But the normal protocol would be a hearing. And that's what's in the Wisconsin statute. 
So from there, with the determination would be made whether that permit should have been issued. And the concern here from the people that are contacted us that they were never offered a hearing. So that they're questioning why the permit was issued. Burial mound, that the permit should still allow us to be able to do the core sampling. But at this point, uh, both uh, the gentleman from UW Milwaukee and the other ones that were going to do the actual work are, are saying that it's in their best interest not to do it at this point. So no, no study will be done today, no testing will be done today. Um, and what happens in the future, I can't tell you at this point, but at today, nothing will happen at this point. So, all right. I can be around for any questions. I'll try to answer them the best I can. This is the first gentleman. Yeah. Okay, so what's the process? Okay. Well, right now, this is the, the first guy that comes. He's working with the guy that's coming from Madison, who should be here within the next half hour, it sounds like. He has the truck and the rig that will actually I don't know what he does for truck rides, but he's the first one. In Racine, in a multi places a cemetery, and it settles the question of whether a family can bury their loved one in a plot that Native Americans say is a sacred burial ground. Or does it really settle it? A.J. Magpour tonight asking the question, is this really a permanent solution? <sighs> Here we go. We just all sit in a circle. Yes. The burning of sage and sweet grass. It's a Native American ritual intended to cleanse one's mind. The members of Ogichida, Mawasomag, meet at the mound that's at the center of a saga that has lasted several months. They are relieved the Meredith family ever seen will not purchase this plot. Everything about the entire situation has been very unfortunate. Duke Meredith speaks for the family at a press conference Friday. The family announces it is dropping its effort to purchase this plot of land at the Mount Cemetery amid concerns that Native American remains might be buried there. And it makes the whole Chunk Nation quite glad and all that. Um, there is some honor and respect being shown you know, towards something that culturally is very significant to us as a people. There are questions, however, as to whether this plot really is part of an Indian burial ground. We go back to the State Historical Society. They work to the extent humanly possible to find out all the information that they can. They said we see no claims at all that this is uh, anywhere near a, a burial site. But uncertainty remains, and the Merediths say out of respect for the Ho-Chunk Nation, they'll bury their loved one elsewhere, but they don't feel good about it. Try and do this for ourselves. Not one ounce of consideration, not one ounce of compassion was there, and that's where we stand today. The members of the group opposed to the purchase say they are sympathetic toward the Merediths. They just want to protect land they believe to be sacred. The Racine Mayor John Dickert is now asking the group to buy this plot so the same thing doesn't happen again 20 or 40 years from now. He hopes to meet with them within the next 60 to 90 days. All right. The top. Yeah. So who is Meredith? Reference in the top email of Exhibit 1578. I have no idea. You don't know who the Meredith contribution is from? No. Would it be appropriate to break down a single contribution into 10 anonymous contributions? I don't believe that's possible. You don't believe it's appropriate? I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what the law is, so I'm not sure that you can do that or not. This is a done deal. Get ready to do it. They haven't even asked permission to do it yet. Which the is mayor right. told them privately, oh, yeah, you're cash customers, do it. And that's what I've been instructed to do. They're cash paying customers. This is partisan back 
room Chicago politics. I was never asked. I was never consulted. I've simply gotten emails and said this is a done deal.